we got the news that he was in extremely serious condition and it just went from worse to worse. In about a 12 hour time period, it, it went from, he's just kind of had, had this little sick thing at home to life or death. We were, you know, we were in a, we we're in a battle for a child's life and for a family. I'm a little bit of a, um, a nut when it comes to Christmas <laughs> because I didn't have the lights outside and all of that. We grew up, you know, kind of poor, and, and um, so this was a really special Christmas for us. Um, you know, we went out and got our tree, and stockings were hung, and then everything changed. We love to do uh, train cake every year together as a family, and Jackson and I were actually doing that, just me and him that day. So it was a super fun, like, mommy-son moment, and we were making the cake, and then that evening, just not long after that, he was just laid out on the floor. I knew this, he's not okay. He needs to go to the hospital. And so we rushed him to the ER. He was just, like, so sick, and I could hardly, you know, get him to the hospital. The doctor had called me up, and he said, I'm really concerned that he might have E. coli. When I heard that, I thought, oh, psh, that's like one in a million chance. I don't feel like that would be possible. Um, and if it is E. coli, that's treatable. And a lot of times E. coli doesn't, I mean, it's just a terrible sickness and it passes through the system. But in our case, um, he contracted HUS, that, which then developed into kidney failure and to the most severe, um, the most severe case of HUS. The doctor had said that this is basically out of their realm of capabilities and that we had to go to a different children's hospital. And I was thinking, oh, that's gonna be in the next few days. He said, no, you need to go tonight and you're gonna get on a helicopter, we're gonna fly him there. I was just flooded with the sense that I might never know my boy. Growing up to be a man, it might be this week that I lose my son. All of a sudden, his speech starts to slur. He just started not being able to communicate, not being able to respond. In the middle of the night, they rushed us up to the PQ and called the neurosurgeon in. They tested him and there was no response. There was no pain response. There was no recognition of me. And at that moment, I thought, I, I'm losing my son. Even if he makes it through this, I don't know if he'll ever know me again. He was just sprawled out on the bed and couldn't respond to anything. He was gone. There's a time when you've said every prayer you can say, and you don't have the strength to praise and worship anymore. And you haven't slept for weeks. And you're just kind of undone. And that was a moment for me when I was undone. The flip side of that is, I feel like that was the moment that I really began to feel the prayers around the world. Hi, it's Christmas morning, and a lot of you are asking how Jackson's doing. And just want to say thanks for all your prayers and support. It's been overwhelming. Um, it's a really long story, but it's really complicated right now, and we really need a Christmas miracle. They can't get to his blood. Um, there was something supernatural that, that happened that brought the church together. I would pull up social media and I would just read people's prayers in the comments of people all over the world. I've never met them before, but they were just crying out for my son. We were in the brink of life or death and people would be posting comments on our Facebook. We are up praying for you. People posting by the thousands, commenting, and they'd be all over the world. We're in Brazil. My church, whole church is praying for you. I'm in Russia. My little children pray for your son every day. I didn't have any prayers left to say, but I could feel and see and hear the prayers being said on my behalf. Yeah, just 
This is a box full of letters and something that we've really treasured. This is the bed that Jackson is laying on. And Jesus is healing him. They're in the middle of the world. Oh, well. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> From Mercy, four years old. Hooked up to everything. They allowed me just to like hold him in my arms and you could just see the light still in his eyes. And I just remember just standing and declaring over him. He was gonna he was gonna raise up out of that grave and he was gonna he was gonna live. We'd get good news and then worse news. It would be this it was so up and down and so we go to the hospital and they said they thought he'd be okay, so they sent us home. And then to find out that he's worse than you even thought the first time. And then you're at the hospital and you're thinking, you know, he's gonna get better. And then you find yourself in a helicopter. And then you find yourself in a... <sighs> the head of the PICU came in and said, we have to get we have to get a central line in tonight. They couldn't give him another sedative, so it would be like going in, basically having surgery on a child without any anesthesia. And the doctor took us aside and put us in another room. They took us in a room and explained we had to have this procedure done or we would lose him, but there were so many risks to having the procedure done. <laughs> I remember the night we got the text that they didn't think he was going to make it through the night. When you got the text, you just collapsed into my arms and just like began to weep. And I could just feel like, like, we're going to lose. Like, we're going to lose Jack's. Like, we're not going to win this one. There's not going to be victory on this battlefield. Those moments, even though they're really hard, something within us rises up. The only moments of trauma and mm. intensity can actually call forth. In those moments for us, like the only option is like, we just have to worship. I remember standing at this crossroads and this giant of unbelief standing in front of me. Like it's, it's your prayers don't matter. Um, all these prayers don't matter. Like the Lord's not gonna hear it. This is gonna be like the other moments where you prayed with all your heart and then you buried your friend the next week. And, um, and it, but there was like something inside of me of like, no. And the melody just erupted out of my heart that, um, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. He sent me a song, and I didn't know to what extent, but it said his, their community had prayed for Jackson, and in a spontaneous moment, they came up with a song, and so they just you know, recorded it and sent it to me. I took that song over my phone, and I played over my son over and over again. You know, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. And that's exactly what I was doing. I was, I was fighting warfare and, and it was, wasn't just me, I wasn't alone. I had people were <laughs> literally making weapons, writing songs and sending them to us. It still humbles me and baffles me. The power of global prayer, the power of community, the power of believing together. He started talking again. What did you just paint a picture of? You know, he was, you could tell it was, it was still like fragile, it was still coming back, but he was talking again, and that was like amazing. He was asking in the cutest two year old voice, like everything he can imagine that he liked, you know, I want a hamburger, I want a hamburger, <laughs> you know? But we were so happy to hear him talking again. From talking with Joel, the tone started to feel like, oh wow, we, we're coming out of this, I think. Just the shift internally of like we made it was incredible. We walked in to the hospital just before Christmas and now we're sitting here with a healthy son taking his nap right now. Hey buddy, look we're going home. <laughs> look, you haven't been outside for a month. I, I remember hearing the news that uh, Jackson is coming home and it was like, uh, it was like Christmas. We believe in the power of praise. We've seen God do a lot. And I don't know the secret 
into all of it, but I do know that Jackson is well today. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but wonder or think that uh, that that praise had a part of that. This is part of our story now, and it's part of Jackson's testimony of his life that the world will know that miracles happen. This gospel is not haphazard. It's not a Russian roulette. It's not a guessing game. It is the absolute nature of God revealed through his goodness and his kindness. And what is necessary is for the people of God to rise to the occasion, to face the impossibilities of life with the confidence of God's character, his nature, and his promise. There's no other option. We were called to this. This is our responsibility. It is our privilege. <laughs>